I'm going to ask you please to take your Bibles and look with me to Proverbs chapter 3. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. No road is too long. No path is too steep. No way is too hard when you are walking with God. We all love the mountaintop experiences in life. We love when everything is going well and life is, for the most part, pain-free and problem-free. We are not, however, so fond of the valleys. But see, the truth is, we all have to walk through the valley. But even those difficult times, even the days we spend in the valley are better when we walk with God through the valley. Today, I want to show you from Scripture how to walk with God through the valley. These are very familiar verses. Please stand as I read them for us. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will make your path straight. Please be seated. These are very, very familiar to most of you. Many of you probably have them memorized. This is God's wisdom given to man. Now, I need you to understand something right off the, the bat. These verses are not meant specifically for someone who is going through difficult times. In other words, these verses aren't directed specifically for someone who is walking through the valley. These verses tell us how we should walk in all of life, good days and bad. These verses tell us how to live at all times. But what I want you to see is how critically important this is, especially when you're in difficult times. It's important every day. But when the days are hard, it's especially important that we walk with God. Hear what we are promised is if we do what these verses say, God will make our paths straight. To understand what this is talking about, you need to understand a practice that ancient kings used to have. If kings were going to go on a journey to another city or another territory, they would send out a crew ahead of the king who would make the roads good. If they were too hilly and bumpy, they would level them. If they needed bridges, built or repaired, they would build or repair bridges. They would do whatever they could to make the road good traveling for the king. And that's the idea that's being pictured here. Now, it doesn't mean for you and I that God's going to make everything rosy if we do what these verses say. It doesn't mean that everything's going to be great it does mean he will order your steps before you. He will make a way for you. No obstacle will keep you from arriving safely at your destination if you walk with God. Now, how can you walk with God through the valley? We're given three words of instruction, and then the promise. He will make your path straight if we do these three things. Here's the first one. Well, let me give you the big idea. How about that? Walking with God through the valley means walking by faith. That's what all of these things together are going to teach us. Walking with God through the valley means walking by faith. That means walking in confident trust in who God is. To have faith in God and trust God, by the way, is the same thing. Different words to say the same thing. So walking with God through the valley means walking by faith. Here's the first thing we must do. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. This word trust, the Hebrew word, means to rely on. 
It is a confidence that we have in God that causes us to rely on him. He gives us a sense of security, so we trust him. We, we have confidence in him, so much confidence that we rely on him. To trust God is saying, I am so confident in God that I am relying on him. The word heart, trust in the Lord with all your heart, refers to who you are on the inside. Sometimes the word heart is referring to your mental capacities. Sometimes it's referring to your will, your volitional capabilities. Sometimes it's referring to your emotions, the way we as Western people would normally talk about with all your heart. We usually think of emotions. Well, in Hebrew, it can be used for any of those things. But I want you to notice what he says here. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. So is he talking about your mind, your will, or your emotions? Yes, all of those things. With all that you are, trust God mentally, physically, emotionally. So we're directed to rely on God, place our confidence in Him with everything we are, thoughts, actions, even our emotions. Now, for the believer, this is how we should live our lives every single day, relying on Him for absolutely everything. But this is especially critical when you're walking through difficult days. When you're in the midst of a crisis, when you're up against a struggle of some sort, when you're being beaten and battered by the difficulties of life, it's so important that during those days you rely on God. You have absolute confidence in God through whatever it is you're going through. You rely on God to tell you what to think. When you're walking through the valley, you need to rely on the truth. How many of you know the enemy will feed you lies? Jesus said he's the father of lies. He will feed you lies. The enemy will tell you you're all alone. But God said, I'll never leave you or forsake you. It's so important. When you're in difficulty, you don't listen to the lies of the enemy. The enemy will tell you, you're too weak. You're never going to make it. I have heard people say, and I have said myself, I can't do this anymore. That's a lie. Because Jesus said to the apostle Paul, 1 Corinthians 12, my strength is made perfect in weakness. When you are at your weakest, that's when I am strongest. See, it's so important that we don't allow those lies to dictate the way we think, especially when we're struggling. Every day it's important, but especially when you're prone to listening to the lies of the enemy because your situation is difficult, you need to trust God with all your heart. That means with, with what you're thinking. Make sure you're thinking according to the truth. You also need to rely on God for how you're going to act. Not just for how you think, but how you're going to act. Listen, when you're walking through the valley, the last thing you want to do when you're deciding how you're going to act is rely on your instincts. We can't base our actions on human wisdom or human advice. We have to look to God. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. That means you're willing, what you desire, what you will to do, how you're going to perform. See, if you're, if you're in a financial crisis, wisdom of man might tell you to cut back on your giving. God may tell you to give more. If you're in a health crisis, you know, man might tell you to lie down and sleep. God might tell you to rise up and walk. If you're in a relationship crisis, 
Man may tell you to go. God may tell you to stay. Right? I mean, when you're in difficulty and you're plotting a course of action, you don't listen to your own thoughts. You don't listen to the wisdom of men. You look to God. You look to the Word of God to dictate how you're going to perform. That's what you call trust. I'm relying on God to tell me how to think. I'm relying on God to tell me how to act. I'm relying on God. To, listen, I'm relying on God to tell me how to feel. Our problem as humans, one of them, is that we allow our feelings to be dictated by our circumstances. In other words, I let my circumstances form my emotions. And in some ways, it's hard to make yourself feel something, right? But there is something I want you to think about. We need to be people who are training our emotions to respond to what God says is true, right? Your circumstances may make you want to cry in defeat when God may be telling you to shout in victory. Your circumstances might make you want to despair when actually God has given you every reason to be rejoicing in hope. You know, your, your circumstances may make you feel like you just want to walk around with your head down staring at the ground. When God may be trying to say to you, lift up your eyes, helps on the way. You see, we can allow our human nature to, you know, to see the circumstances we're in and make us feel all these things that really demonstrate a lack of trust in God. Now, I'm not talking about sadness and grief. When difficult things happen, you're going to have sadness and you're going to have grief. But what I need you to understand is you need to tr we need to train our emotions to respond to what God says is true. Now, that's, that's not something... I think you ever really master this side of heaven, but I do think it's something we ought to recognize. We ought to recognize when my emotions right now are not where they need to be. Right now, I feel hopeless. That's how I feel. But is that true? Is the situation hopeless? No, not for the believer, never. Well, I could die. Yeah, and then you go to glory. What a shame, right? I mean, it, it's a matter of you and I realizing that to trust in the Lord with all your heart means we rely on him to tell us what to think. We rely on him to tell us what to, what to do, and we rely on him to tell us how to feel. We need to move on. We need to trust in the Lord with all your heart. Walking with God through the valley means relying on him for everything. Here's the flip side of that. The opposite of that. Do not lean on your own understanding. The word understanding means insight or discernment. It refers to the ability to know what is right or wrong. It is knowing how to discern the right course of action. Now the word lean, do not lean on your own understanding, it, it pictures resting your weight on something like a crutch, putting your weight on a crutch. When used figuratively, it means to trust or rely on, like we've just been talking about. Now, your own ability, listen to this, your own ability to discern the right course of action is like a broken crutch. You can't trust it to hold you up. You remember the hymn, Stand Up, Stand Up for Jesus? There's a line in there that says, Stand up, stand up for Jesus. Stand in his strength alone. The arm of flesh will fail you. You dare not trust your own. We would be fools 
to rely on our own flawed human insight when we have the very word of the living God at our disposal. Don't rely on your own human insight, human wisdom. Listen, when you're walking through the valley, you don't just do what seems right at the time. You can't just react the way your human nature seems to be leading you to do. Can, can I tell you what I've heard a million times, and you have too if you've been in church for long? I just feel like God is leading me. I feel like God is leading me. ask you a question how do you have any cotton picking way in the world to know that what you're feeling is God is there a tool somewhere that you can gauge your feelings and tell if they're from God or not and the answer is we take our cues from the scripture not from how we feel. Somebody might say, well, I just don't feel like God wants me to do that. I'm like, well, the Bible says it does. And guess what? God's word trumps how you feel. Well, I don't think I have that gift. Well, the Bible says you do. Are you with me? This is why it's so important, especially in difficulty. You can't rely on your feelings you know, your own human instinct, your own human nature, you have to look to God. I have learned the hard way. A very important lesson. There are a lot of preachers, and I'm one of them, who have a policy that they won't be alone with another woman who's not their wife. Or not a relative. And the one exception I make to that is elderly women. I'll go visit elderly women in their homes, and that's different. But a woman who's anywhere near my age or younger, I just won't, I won't counsel them in a room with the door closed, those kind of things. Some people think that's ridiculous, and they say, don't you trust yourself? My answer, no. <laughs> I've been down that road before. Now, do I honestly think I would do something? I, I pray I would never even cross that my mind. But do I trust myself? No. And if you trust yourself, you're a fool. Right? I've learned the hard way in life. Can I get an amen? I've learned the hard way in life. You don't trust yourself. Don't trust yourself. Because too many times I've chosen the wrong path when I followed my own understanding. You may not know this, but that one time the Department of Transportation set aside $200 million for research and testing of an automated highway system. It was intended for large cities that had really, really bad traffic problems on the freeways. And it was kind of like a super cruise control for heavily congested traffic. There were special magnets to be embedded in the asphalt every four feet. They transferred signals from the, from the vehicle. They, magnets would interact with the vehicles and send signals back to a main computer system. Steering, braking, acceleration, all of that would be controlled by sensors, computer navigation systems, and cameras all the way along the roadway. Basically, it would take control of your car. And... Control would be returned to the driver when he got to the exit he was exiting off of. Well, the officials claimed they had all the technological capabilities to address any possible problems that the system might have. They said there's no reason to think it wouldn't work perfectly. We have the ability, the technology to fix any issues that might come up. There's only one problem they have not been able to overcome. This is according to Mike Doble, the technology manager for Buick. <laughs> you know what the only problem he said is? We can't get people 
to trust the system. It's not a technology issue, he said. It's a trust issue. In other words, if you think I'm turning loose of this steering wheel, you crazy. I took a test drive in a car one time in a Honda, Honda CRV SUV. And we got on the interstate, and he said, get up to about 70. And I did, and he said, turn loose of the steering wheel. I said, what? He said, just turn. He said, put it on cruise and just turn it loose. And I did. It followed every curve. If it come up behind the car, it slowed down. When the car was gone, it'd speed back up. I mean, it, it, he said, you have to be, you know, going a certain highway speed or it won't work. But can I tell you, that's, that's just freaky. I mean, it's, it's, it's just nerve. I can't, I mean, that's just hard for me to turn loose the steering wheel. Here's what I want you to see tonight. When we're going through difficulty, God can steer us up and over, around, and through every obstacle we may face, but you're going to have to trust him enough to let go of the steering wheel. You're going to have to be willing to not put your trust in yourself you're going to have to consciously make a decision to not rely on what I think how I feel what I want I'm going to have to look and take my cues from God's word you know one thing that is incredibly freeing though this is freeing to me when I'm in a crisis it's not my job to figure out what to do is God's job I don't, have to, I don't have to solve it on my own. I look to God and take my cues from Him. As much as you should trust God, that's how much you shouldn't trust yourself. Well, I think I'm a pretty wise man. So was Solomon. And he had 700 wives and 300 concubines. Solomon was a smart. Solomon was a moron, Right? David was a wise man. Look at the things he did. Can I tell you something? Some of the smartest people do some of the stupidest things. Don't trust yourself. Lean not on your own understanding. Here's the third thing. In all your ways, acknowledge him. And then he will direct your path. All your ways. Your ways are your actions, your behavior, what you do. So we might say, in everything you do, acknowledge him. The word acknowledge is actually a word in Hebrew that just means to know. In all you do, in everything you do, seek to know God. Seek to know God's heart, to know God's mind, to know God's will. When you're walking through difficulty, when you're walking through the valley, you need to know the heart of God. You, you need to know the mind of God. You need to know the will of God. And you don't need to act until you do. This is the practical aspect of trusting in the Lord with all your heart. The practical part is you seek to know God's heart, to know God's mind, to know God's will in regard to whatever your situation is before you act or react. You seek to know the heart, mind, and will of God. Listen, if your marriage is in a crisis, before you decide to walk out, you seek the heart of God. If your finances are in a wreck, before you seek out credit counselors or attorneys, you seek the mind of God. If your children are disobedient and rebellious, before you ask Dr. Phil, you better seek to know the will of God. Listen, when you're in the middle of a crisis, you, you, you may feel like you're trapped, like the walls are closing in around you, you've fallen in and you can't see any way out. You don't need the advice of the experts. Experts built the Titanic. Amateurs built the ark. You don't need human wisdom. You need something more than a little help from your friends. You need something more than the best you can do. You need God. When you're in a crisis, you need to know the heart, the mind, and the will of God. So before you think 
before you act, before you have time to know what you feel, seek the heart, the mind, and the will of God about whatever you're going through. In a crisis, listen, let me just boil it down this way. In a crisis, as Christians, our default response in times of difficulty should be to turn to the Word of God in prayer. That should be our default. Before you react to a crisis in your life, seek to know what God would have you to do, what God would have you to think, and what God would have you to feel. Even if you can't make yourself feel it, you need to know what you ought to feel, how you ought to feel about this. Right? So here's the blueprint. Prayerfully search the Word of God. Seek the wisdom of godly people, people who know the book. Pray for God's will to be revealed through His Word and through the wisdom of those who know His Word. Listen, we're all going to go through valleys. We're all going to go through difficult days. And we want to have the confidence that God is going to be with us, that God is going to get us through. We want to have the reassurance and the peace that comes from knowing that God is making a way before me. Well, that, that reassurance and that confidence comes from trusting the Lord with all your heart, leaning not on your own understanding, but in all ways acknowledging Him. And we roll that up into one statement. It just means walking with God through the valley. It means walking by faith. We walk according to what we know about God. We act based on what we know about God. We think based on what God has told us to think. We feel, or we make an effort to feel what we know God would have us to feel. Rejoice in the Lord always. Some people say, well, you can't command people to feel something. Yeah, but the Bible does. Rejoice and be glad. God commands you to be glad. He's telling you what to feel. Are you with me? But that comes from walking by faith. That just means in everything you think and do and say, we look to the Lord to give us our cues. We rely on Him, not human wisdom, whether it comes from us or someone else. When you don't know what to do, look to God to tell you what to do, and then just do that. When you don't know what to think, look to God to tell you what's true, to tell you what you should think, and then believe that. That's what walking by faith is, taking God at His word. That's how you make your way out of the valley. And by the way, that's also how you find peace in the valley. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word.